Hello and welcome back to Castle Doctrine. I have some bad news. It's not really news that you weren't expecting or that I wasn't expecting, but my heart is heavy with it nonetheless. Our wife, Jill, has been shot. Not clubbed to death, but shot. I suppose, well, she seems to have been bleeding from her abdomen, not her head. I, I don't think it was a quick death. I think she was lying on the floor in agony for a little time. The robber proceeded to walk over her corpse. I don't think there was actually anything there for her to, for him to steal off her, and then proceeded to die in a pit. She died for nothing. It cost the robber a thousand dollars, but that's all. He has got another life, no doubt, and another gun, and I, I will never have another drill. Well, I might actually, but uh, not in this life, anyway. But thankfully, Joshua and Deanne are both safe and sound. Now, you can see that I've spent a bit of money, so that indicates that I have changed some things. Now, I'll just click there so it highlights everything that's new. This is all new, and this is all new down here. Now, you might be wondering, well, what is all of this nonsense? But there's a cat down there, and that cat's very important. This trap is now, at least partially, and will eventually be much more so, reliant on the cat. Uh, right now, you don't actually need to do anything with the cat to, to activate the trap. I need a little bit more money to afford powered pits. But eventually, the cat is going to be an integral part of this trap system. And exactly how that's going to work is this um, button here is going to be... There's going to be power pits in front of it. Now, ladders cost an enormous amount of money. So I don't think many people carry them into a house unless they absolutely know they want to use them. So if I make this about three long, that's, what, that's $1,800? That, I was about to say 18000 That's definitely not how much they cost. But $1,800 just to bypass this trap. So I don't think many people are going to be going for that option. What's going to happen is when you step on this, these trap, these uh, power pits will turn off. So you're not going to be able to access the rest of the trap without turning this on, which means that this remains deadly at all times. So the cat ultimately is a tool for you to activate this remotely. Now, the way you get the cat in there requires a little bit of thinking. Now, this isn't a particularly complicated system. I, I've thrown this together in about three minutes whilst watching Revokane's Banjo-Kazooie stream. But basically, you have to move in a specific way to get the cat to move in the way you want so that it eventually ends up travelling up here. You also need to have opened certain doors. If that door is not open, the cat will just run straight into the pit when you're trying to guide him up there, and so on and so forth. There are lots of ways you can kill the, the cat. The, I will probably expand this, make it much more complicated and add lots more pits and... Uh, Places so that there, there's very little room for error. I don't want to make it perfect because I don't think someone who just comes in here and observes the trap will be able to work that out. And I I want to try and keep away from the whole chihuahuas hidden behind walls that will trick you into thinking a floor is safe and then it'll kill you. Because there's no way of someone knowing that that's the case. And thus there's no real way of them solving it. As much as I want to make a house that is impossible to break, because that's the sort of win criteria, I also want to make one that's fun, and also very satisfying to solve. Now, people can just bring a lot of money here, and a lot of uh, various things to cut through walls and things like that, and uh, so they don't really need to solve it, per se, but those who do, I want them to feel like, yeah, I earned that, and uh, I also want them to kind of think, ah, oh, that was a pretty cool trap. I, I liked playing that, you know, puzzle, working that one out. So, that is all we can really afford. We need about four, $600, $400, $600, maybe even 800 so that we can have some more power pits over there. And then we'll be able to set this trap up properly. We also need money to make a tomb. Now, I'm thinking of building up some sort of tomb and having this as a secondary location where I could put the vault, depending if I wanted to or not, with a, obviously a commitment point where you enter. So, I mean, I know that does lead to a little bit of like, oh, well, you know, I'm rolling a dice, I can't really solve it. And I d did just say that I don't want to 
use particular like um, dogs in walls tricks but the main reason why I think I'm gonna have to employ something like that is that once someone solves this puzzle that's it they can just keep coming back and in fact in the security tapes that I've seen some people have repeatedly come back the same person and just robbed me again and again and again so I need to be able to mix it up a little bit now and then just to throw those people off um, so there will be a little bit of chance but then you know I don't I'm not against there being some sort of random chance as long as it's not the sort of vegas random chance where you know the gambling machine the odds are stacked against you it's not random okay you're not rolling a dice and maybe winning it is not random the odds of these games are seriously stacked in the casino's favor and that's not a bad thing you know you basically go in there with wise eyes wide open i would hope and you're accepting yeah i'm playing a rigged game but you know i'm getting enjoyment out of the possible thrill uh, the possibility that i might walk away with some cash because people do obviously but uh yeah there, there will be some randomness in it even if it's just a case of you pick the left door, you pick the right door. One leads to certain doom, and the other one leads to a vault full of treasure. If you can solve the rest of the puzzle. But anyway, let's go ahead and uh, activate this. I'm not going to play around with the cat, because I don't need to yet. So we're just going to go and activate everything. Uh, have I got any tools? Yes, I do. I'll take some meat. Uh, I don't want to take an expensive crowbar. Uh, I, I kind of do, though. Hmm... No, we'll we'll be going out and doing some scouting first. So we're going to activate this. Now, I can just go up here and activate the trap as normal. I guess I could show you how the cat works, walks around. I guess it wouldn't be too bad. As long as I open that door first, then it should be okay. Uh, let, let's go and see the cat then. Where are you, cat? Come hither. Go. Now, you've got to keep quite close behind it to try and control it. There, is, there are, if you look on the wiki, it does explain how animals move in relation to your position to them. And it is quite important to keep that in mind whilst doing this particular trap. Okay, you're up there. There we go. Now you shouldn't be in the pit. No, good, good, good. Now you can go elsewhere. Go on, skedaddle. I don't want you messing up my trap. Right, so we turn this off. We turn. Let's see. Please tell me that's okay. Okay. I, for a dread moment there, thought I was going to kill myself. <gasps> I didn't turn it back on! No! No way. I have killed myself. Well! That's what that feeling was for. That was my, my heart telling me, you're about to do something horribly stupid. Don't do it. Don't do it, Avak. Turn back. Turn back before you do it yourself. And I already have. I was so busy thinking about the cat. I knew I shouldn't mess with the cat. God damn it. Oh, well. Life was crap without Jill anyway. Bloody hell. I hate doing that. It happens much more often than you realize as well. Oh, my lord. So, new family. Kimberly, Tommy, and Amber. I, I'm really sorry. I, I feel I need to apologize to you guys. Come on. Family discussion here. I feel I need to come clean with you and just, just say sorry in advance because I'm a terrible trap maker and I'm a, an awfully bad survivor and you're, you're kind of saddled with me, really. I feel like I'm going to burden you. It would probably be better if I just committed suicide right now, honestly. Well... Not for the children. Well, actually, not for any of you. Assuming that we have a loving relationship, it would be kind of traumatic. But, uh, well, damn it all. <laughs> On the plus side, an enormous amount of people had robbed that house. So the, the main sort of idea of the trap had already been thoroughly understood by the majority of players, I feel. Uh, where am I going to put you? I'm going to put you down here. Let's stick you all the way down there. <sighs> Man... That is really suckful. I hate it when that happens. Even worse when it's on camera, because then I can't even hide from my idiocy. I can't pretend it didn't happen and then I just decided to uh, start a new game. No, no, I can't. You all know my dark secret. I am, in fact, an idiot. Okay, Amber, Tommy, you, you two stick together. I'm going to separate you and your mother a little bit. 
I know this is terrible, but I don't want. Uh, well, hmm, I what I don't want is. Uh, I guess if the robber moves past here, they're gonna see him. So what I could do is move this up a little bit, like so. There. Okay. <sighs> I hate doing this. I, I hate putting you in a room like this. In fact, I should really give you some... Maybe I'll add some pets. Amber is very fond of her cat. And her cat is very fond of Amber. It's quite protective, actually. It's almost like a dog. I'm not going to have a chihuahua as a pet. I refuse to live in a house where a chihuahua is a option for a pet. I don't mind it being an option for a trap component, but a pet? No. No, no, no. That's just wrong. Okay. Let's think. What are we going to do? How are we going to set this up? We've got a little corridor. Let's, let's start simple. Uh, we can have some dead ends. Actually, let's put it down here. Some options of where you can go. And how do we want to limit their access to the vault? This is the main question. We could have a dog in here perhaps, but that's not really going to do much because they're just going to run that way. Unless, for some reason, this is powered. We could have a... Yeah, we could put this there. And then this. Let's see. And we could have a... Mm, well, I don't know. We could have a powered pit there with the idea that whatever you've you've disabled this somehow if you cut this because it's on and you just want to get past then you're going to basically bug yourself there because you're not going to be able to get over the powered pit and actually i'm going to shunt everything back a little bit just so that i can uh, put that there make the vault a little bit harder to see behind everything else um and of course that's mix up the types of walls that we're using. Right. Okay. We could put this up there. And then another powered pit even. Just to make sure that if anyone does want to just break in using money, they're going to have to spend a lot of it. And that's the best I can do really to deter people from trying that. Now, as I was saying, what we want is under normal operation, when you step here, assuming this has been turned off, something turns these on. Oh, wait. Hmm. Well, I suppose you could. we could try another cat-type puzzle, or, or a chihuahua puzzle, or a pit bull puzzle, where stepping here has that that's off, and then you've got to step here. The, the walk of faith, but make it clear to them what's happening. And perhaps we can use a cat for that again, because... It's a lot harder to direct a cat than it is to direct a pit bull or a chihuahua. You've got to think a lot more in order to get that set up. But we're not leaving much room for us to do this. This is right on the edge here. So we would need something where if we stood here, that turned off. If we stood there, if we stood here perhaps, it would turn back on. Like you could have a switch there, and a switch here, both powering the same sort of thing. You step there. Yeah, we could do that. So if you're there, the cat moves there, turns it off. You move there, cat moves there. You move there, the cat would either move down or would move to the side. Hmm. Or perhaps what you could do is step there, it turns off, step there there, there, and just time the distance the cat would have to travel down to activate this. But I'm I'm not entirely sold on this idea yet. Let's move this back anyway. So there we go. Right, so we're going to need a power plant at the very least. Where we place this power plant, uh, dictates how much room we've got to actually set up the logic for this trap. Let's do that. Now, we could have windows, possibly. 
I'm a fan of windows. Windows are good. They add lighting. Though, actually, let's uh, be a little bit artistic with this. Make it symmetrical. Like so. Um, right, how do we want to power this? We want a switch that would turn this off. And then something that we do over here that turns this on again. Either that or we leave this empty space here. Which, you know, might be reasonable to do. Right. So we'll bring this up through a metal wall. This is the, the simplest sort of version of it. We have a, a powered switch. Turn it off. It's now safe to walk over. But we need something to happen when we're here. So how are we going to do that? Hmm. Unless we... Hmm, we could possibly have a dog chasing us. When we step there, it activates another power... Uh, another switch. For example, if we have both of these on, then stepping here turns off power completely. But, if we were to do this, then currently this is also controlling it. So first we step there, turn that off, step across. If the dog then comes down there, it turns it back on, it would allow us to escape. Though, hang on a minute. That also means that the dog would die. I'm not okay with this. Sacrificing a beloved pet. Even a chihuahua. That's just not on. Let's uh, rethink this. Definitely want uh, some sort of pet down here. And yes, I know I'm making the job harder for myself without really any you know, benefit in terms of game uh, goals. But uh, this is how I make the game fun for myself. I like being silly. So we'll have, I'm, I'm, I think a cat is going to be the way we do this. We want a cat so that when we step there, it does something. But it's making sure that it, it is in the right position to start with. We could perhaps um, frighten the cat up into, yeah, actually that seems to make sense. If you do something like this. If we can somehow force that cat across and in there, hmm. and then have wires coming up there. Yes, I'm liking this. We could have another grill about here, another wall there and there and then do that just to again make it so that uh, someone has to use multiple different types of cutting tools in order to get past right so what we want ideally is to have the cat duck into this room so that we can pass power through this and up into the main system now then, how are we going to accomplish that? And how are we going to do it? No, because if we've got him in here and we're walking up, he's going to get all sorts of confused. Hmm. Though, if we count the steps, let's just uh, disable this for now and replace all of these with windows so that I can just see how the cat would move. And we'll get rid of this as well. Don't need that there just now. Uh, we'll have that one like so. So the goal here is to have the cat, when we're standing there, to have activated some sort of switch down there. So let's go ahead and place a cat in this little room. Like that. And also, let's go ahead and just get rid of that door. Don't really need it. Place another window there. Right, this should do. So our goal is to convince the cat to move in that way. What we should probably do as well is have a powered door somewhere. 
that releases the cat into this room to start with. So you need to have done that first. Yeah, actually, I, I quite like that idea. Right, let's get this set up like that. Place another powered switch. That's true, actually. This is one of those things where you can use these to let us know whether stuff has moved the way we expect it to. So we'll do that for now. And that one we don't need. The main thing is to find whether or not this has activated it properly. So this door currently will always be on, which is not what we want. We want that to turn on at a very specific time. So let's change this, have a regular wire like that. And we could do another wire coming out here. Let's see. And perhaps I can, at some later point, because I don't think I'm going to have enough money to, to do this right now, but at some later stage, I could make uh, the sort of traps where you step on the button and it electrifies around it, and that's the point, so you've got to have undone other buttons first. Again, I'm very fond of that mechanic. So we'll, we'll try that. And you notice I'm being quite blatant with the wiring. I don't need to hide it. The point is that they can't they need to do this in a very specific way, otherwise it breaks. So we'll have the cat in here. Where are you? Right, let's have a, a look and see if we can get this to light up in the way we want. So our family is down at the bottom. We don't have to worry about them too much at the moment. Oh. Wait. Ah, right, okay. Well that would normally be turned on. I need to swap that around. Right, cat, get up there. Has he come in? Yes. Okay. Where is the cat? Okay, cat is in the right place. No, no, he's activating things. Ah, uh, cat, why do you do this? Okay, we need the cat to go up before coming down. Hmm. Okay. And perhaps we can tie this into another door. Though the wiring is getting quite tight in there at this point, so I don't think that would work. We want the cat to go up. So that when we reach this point, he starts moving down again. That doesn't give us very long, actually, come to think of it. Hmm. This isn't an especially secure trap at the moment, but it is a beginning trap. So I guess we can we can iterate on it. We can work through the bugs later. Let's go ahead and get rid of some of these because we don't need them. Not all of them anyway. Um, and we definitely don't need the majority of these windows now. Let's get rid of those as well. This wall, we want to be like this. Ah, but that actually, actually, that's the that's where the complexity came in because this would be an electrified floor. The idea was so that the cat had to activate it when you were stood there. Hmm. Okay, give me a few moments. I will be back, and uh, hopefully, I will have thought of what we need to do. And welcome back. Well, I've spent a little while pondering this out. I have, in the end, measured the steps, basically. Um, it requires that you do things in a set order. You have to have disabled this one first. Um, and once the, the cat actually starts moving down here, you really only have a very limited amount of time to get up there and get onto the safe tile before these uh, activate again. Now... The thing with the cat is, initially, I thought I would have to use a pit. Because I don't want people to be able to just reset the trap if they've made a mistake, just to make the cat move around and then reset it and try again. I want the cat to be basically stopped at that point from doing anything else. And initially I had a pit, but that really didn't sit well with me. In making a trap that intentionally has to kill your pet in order to activate, that's just wrong. 
So in the end, I've uh, worked out to use a door instead. And the cat will, when he steps on this tile, activate the power and he'll be immobilized on that tile. So it achieves the same purpose without killing my pets. Now, unfortunately, as you can see, we've spent all of this money and we have no lethality because all it does is light up. Well, you know, that is a problem, but uh, there's nothing I can do about it. But I'll just show you that the, the trap actually works. Eventually, we'll actually want um, three powered pits there and maybe even more electric grates. Um, but we'll probably add a lot more complexity, a lot of other things, perhaps dead, dead ends, red herrings, that sort of thing. And, and yes, I, I know there's $15 just sitting there waiting for me to collect it. But no, Amber loves her cat. I'm not taking her off her. She's probably going to have to watch her mother get murdered. She might even have to watch herself get murdered. And that's kind of horrible. But uh, at least the cat will be there. Now, let's go ahead and see if this works. So we come over here. Cat is currently locked in there. I've left the windows because, again, I want them to be able to see what the, what's happening. As I said, I want the trap to be fun. I want it to be something you can solve by thinking on the first try. Now, deactivate that. So these are off, but this is a powered pit, so I can no longer get up at the vault, which is bad. So we come down here. We activate that. So I'll deactivate, rather. The cat's in there, but we need to get onto the same horizontal tile as the cat. So here we'll do just dance around a little bit, and the cat will have moved. I usually close this just to make sure the cat can't run back in there if I should misstep, but uh, generally, if you misstep, you've already failed. Now, it's very important to start moving down as soon as the cat does, because it has to move across at this point, so it buys you a few seconds to get ahead of it. I'm now below the cat, so the cat is going to move up, and that is absolutely imperative. The cat is going to start moving down now, so I've got exactly this much time to get up here. Boom! There we go. Powered pit is powered. Walk across to the vault. There we go. So that is my trap for now. I have no money for tools, so I'm going to have to try and rob someone just using my, my smarts. However little of them I have, I'm going to have to employ them entirely to try and uh, solve a puzzle and get some cash. Now, we are coming up to the break point for this episode so i'm probably not going to do any robbery on screen this is going to be a few minutes um shorter than 30 minutes which is really rare maybe just two maybe one and a half perhaps but in the next episode i will have gone out i will have robbed some places possibly got a, enough money to improve the trap and actually add some lethality perhaps not maybe I'll, I'll wait for you guys to come on but i'm probably going to do the robbing off screen um though Again, because of the changes, the game does actually have pretty enjoyable robbery. But uh, I'll think about that off screen and decide then. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. My stupid death, notwithstanding. But uh, I'm actually pretty, pretty pleased with the, the little trap we've got. I think it has great amounts of potential. And hopefully, we will survive long enough to explore how much potential it has. But that's all for now. And uh, I hope you'll uh, join me in the next episode, as always. But until then, do take care.